Look at me one more time. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Paul Paul. Happy birthday to you. Okay, since when we had the 50th anniversary and I stammered around and then the next day thought there were some things that should have been said, I thought, well, if they ask me to talk today, I'm going to jot down some <laughs> remarks so I won't forget anything. Uh, Matthew thought it was uh, appropriate for us to all get together and break bread and gaze upon this ancient specimen. <laughs> and I'm a little bit shaky about it myself. Uh, it seems like that might be tempting the Almighty to have one of those, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans moments. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead with it. Now, let's be clear about it, I offered to settle for a bucket of Popeye's fried chicken and some potato salad on the back deck of the house, but I knew Matthew would want some place that was seriously refrigerated, so I went along with it. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, not everybody gets, around, gets to stick around for 80 years, so I thought maybe there's some things that ought to be said. And uh, so, Here's what I think I'll say. <coughs> First of all, since it's my birthday, I claim the right to bore you all for a few minutes. <laughs> and secondly, I'd like to thank everybody that showed up, uh, even coming from Las Vegas. Mike, that just, that just knocked my socks off. <laughs> uh, but uh, at the age of 80, you realize that most of your life is behind you. There's absolutely no, no certainty that there's very much ahead. Uh, with God's good graces, there might be a few more years or it may be a few more months and whatever it is, there ain't no use worrying about it because it's God's business and not ours. What is our business is making sure that we savor and enjoy each moment and each day as we go along. Um, most of you know I try to do some walking every day to keep from rusting up. And Harry Potter helps me out there. But probably most of you don't know that I appreciate being able to walk. And that's because I can remember a lot of walking during my lifetime. I can remember walking to North Dakota Heights Elementary School. And I don't bring that up to say, oh, when I was your, your age, <laughs> I had to walk to school. I enjoyed walking to school. I walked 14 miles when I was a Boy Scout. And I especially remember walking an autumn, one autumn afternoon through a park in Longview, <coughs> holding the hand of an auburn haired 15 year old who was going to become the partner of my life, even though I didn't realize it at the time. Thank God for that. I can even remember our little family walking through the snow at the Methodist Church in Lone Star one winter morning. I remember my walk this morning, and I appreciated each one of those steps over the last decades. Come to think of it, I've enjoyed all kinds of getting around from one place to another. I remember holding on to the back of a wicker seat uh, and watching a scruffy pilot lift an even scruffier Ford tri-motor off the east side airport runway so that I could get a view of the 1930s version of Longview, Texas from the air. And there were so many airplanes throughout my life to so many destinations. There was the ancient and stalwart old DC-3s all the way to the corporate planes that I flew with Maurice White and Brian Moses. That went from a twin beach to a converted A-26 bomber, which was really a thrill ride, uh, 
to the Convair 240 and the Gulf, Gulf Stream turbine prop. I've flown from one coast to another across the United States and made six trips across the Atlantic with the beloved. What a privilege that was. I can remember riding about eight hours on a little two-car train to cover the 200 mile or so distance between Longview and Beaumont. There were so many trains and so many memorable rides on the train. There was the Texas Eagle and the Sunshine Special, Amtrak and the British Rails 125 that took us from London to Edinburgh in less than five hours. What a privilege that was. There were a lot more ways of getting around to remember, all the way from my little pedal car fire truck through the Swin bicycle to the old 37 Ford truck where you could see the highway through the full boards. <laughs> <laughs> first car the Beloved and I had was a 1940 Chevrolet Coupe. Now some of you who drive much more luxurious vehicles today can wonder how I can consider our little Ford Focus the most elegant transportation and that's easy. You can put in that air conditioned Focus with its airbags and power steering and power windows and power brakes up against the 37 Ford with mechanical brakes. You had to slow that thing down to 25 or before you could even hope that the brakes would stop when you stepped on them. It was a new adventure every day, but I wouldn't have missed it for the world because the beloved and I were able to escape for a few hours at a time in that old truck. And what a privilege that one was. And then there was the work. I started out when I was 14 in movie houses. I earned $9 a week during the summer. If you figure that out, that comes to 22, cent, 22 and a half cents an hour. All that wealth of Gene Ardry too. Boy, how I did. <laughs> and I moved from that to journalism, photographing news events, writing stories about them. I photographed R.G. Letourneau's wondrous machine laying a concrete house out there in, in Longview. In, Then there was a career in public relations that took me all over the United States from coal mines in Oklahoma to Death Valley and Cabinet in uh, California to the cabinet room in the White House to a ballroom in the New York Hilton with a stopover for a Ramos Gin Fizz at the Sazerac Bar of the Roosevelt Hotel in New Orleans. What a privilege. I got to do a little good for others along the way. I helped inoculate 50,000 East Texans against polio. A few kids in East Texas got free lessons from the country's finest band directors because of an idea I had. I taught several hundred how to stand up and talk in front of a church congregation because of an idea David had. What a privilege. And then because a good woman thought, well, what the heck, maybe I'll be able to make something out of him and said yes. I had the rare privilege of helping to bring four children into the world. She not only made me a father and taught me how I should do it, she gave me the strength and the inspiration to keep at it until I got some things right. Despite the flapless balloon stick massacre on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> I never made a lot of money, but with the help of the beloved, we gave our four children something much more important. <coughs> we gave our four children something much more important, a home and the knowledge that they were and still are loved. What a privilege. And after that came grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and somehow the years melted away until incredibly 80 have gone by. What a privilege. Those three words pretty well sum up the last 80 years. What a privilege. Thank you for listening these past few minutes, and thank you all for being here. God bless everyone. I love you. you.